my name is Anu Devi. I work for an organization called Science for Humanity. And what Science for Humanity does, it uh, facilitates collaboration between scientists and organizations abroad. Another thing we do is we deliver scientific and technological solutions to developing countries in particular. So we look for communities that have a need and we evaluate the need and see whether if a solution, if we find a solution, whether it would make real life impact. So it's basically and a research charity. Sorry? It's basically a research charity, like a research coordination charity. Yes. But yes. there aren't really any others of, are there? No, no, this is a very unique uh, charity. It's actually uh, uh, filling in a gap that exists in society at the moment. And the gap is that you have a lot of NGOs and organizations doing something abroad, and you have a lot of scientists who are doing great work and publishing the material and putting on a bookshelf. So the idea yeah, is we yeah. link them together, so there's a bridge. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to tell you about a project we're doing in Thailand. Uh, it's near Bangkok, about 300 kilometers uh, from Bangkok, and the area is called Thai Mai Rok. So um, there's a village of 200 people who, to, until last year, didn't have access to clean drinking water. And uh, so there is an issue of waterborne diseases. A lot of these uh, children, women, and uh, elderly were having, uh, in the mail, were having a lot of episodes of diarrhea. Um, so there's a group of students from the Interna International School of Bangkok who came together and decided to build a water filtration system mm -hmm. together. Um, so, sorry, the school, what was the institution International in School of Bangkok. Okay, and that's a university? Or no, that's no, a, it's a school. It's, it's a, a school, it's so a it's like school. a high school. It's okay, a high school. Got Young it, got kids, it. very motivated. Uh, they're saying, we're going to help this community out. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're uh, being supported by, of course, certain uh, two professors. Mm -hmm. And they're also affiliated with a university as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they built this amazing water tank. And they put it up on a high ground. And they're putting the water from the river into the tank. And by pressure goes down into three different pipes. Mm -hmm. And in the pipe they have uh, sand, gravels, magnesium, carbon to eliminate the chemicals, mm -hmm. uh, hard metals, etc. Yep. But one of the things they're not able to do is remove the bacteria. Okay, yeah. So they went to UNICEF and some of the bigger organizations and said, we need help. But actually nobody responded because like these large organizations, they have so many uh, requests for, for help. Yep. And not everybody's need is, you know, uh, met. Mm -hmm. So they started a discussion on our website and we followed up on this and eventually we said, hey, we'll take this on as a, as a project. Wow. Wow. And now we've linked this school with uh, two, three scientists in Thailand mm -hmm. as well as in Italy who are giving these students advice on how to build uh, a water filtration system that would remove the bacteria. Wow. And of course there are uh, logical uh, solutions like uh, in our society, in your home, when you drink water, uh, it's treated with chlorine. Mm -hmm. So why not we treat the water for these villages mm -hmm. with chlorine, simple, uh, and also cost effective. But the issue is a lot of people, a uh, lot of vendors, water vendors, in this area are advertising their water bottles to be UV treated. So the villages are really, really concerned about, you know, chlorine doesn't, you know, it's going to have bad taste, it's going to help portable health impact uh, on the long run. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just do UV treatment? Yeah, yeah. And UV treatment is expensive. Yeah. So there's a need for education. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a need to look at and evaluate different water treatments yeah. in order to inform the villages that here are your options. Here's the pro and con mm -hmm. per treatment. Yeah. Yep. And that's where we are at the moment. Very uh, interesting. Yeah. So this is the whole kind of community participation thing that is yeah, it's, so often talked about and so seldom done. Yeah, it's all it's all networking. It's it's all using uh, you know the internet in order to build links, in order to share what is available. Because there's a lot of information that's available, but it's just not transferred. So uh, so there's an opportunity here to to work together. You know, we're using an open source strategy method. Yep. Um, yep. If you're interested, uh, uh, call me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my email is ad at scienceforhumanity.net. Um, yes, and I look forward to hearing from you. We Very also good. have projects in all other sectors, so it's not just water and sanitation. Shelter. Shelter as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, get involved, yep. uh, share your knowledge. So, um, tell me a little more about how projects get into the Science for Humanity process and what happens once they are in. 
Uh, there are various ways. Uh, one is we go out and we make links with organizations. We uh, ask them to become a member through our organizational membership scheme. Mm -hmm. So they could come to us and say, there's a need and uh, can you can we establish a project with you? Yeah. That's one way. Another way is uh, a lot of members are increasingly putting in um, conversations or discussions on our, on our website. Mm -hmm. So we go in and we evaluate these discussions and we see whether we could turn one of the discussions into a project. Yeah, so I taking see. an I idea see. and building it from there. Yeah. Um, yes, and if, if you're with the organization or if you're just an individual where you think your community needs something, mm -hmm. uh, can benefit from some scientific technological solution, uh, please be in touch and I would love to hear about your, your, your ideas. So this is kind of the clearinghouse function. People can basically come with a research proposal Yes. And then you can also try and match them to an academic institution that's already got that research moving. Yes, or it could okay. be a new proposal, something that okay. no one's ever, there's no solution for it. So it's mm -hmm. completely innovative. Yep. So it's yep. an idea that we could develop together and then also find scientists or somebody to willing to work on this. Mm -hmm. And when I say scientists, I don't mean just academics. I also mean scientists within the industry. Okay. So, so how do you handle IP? Uh, oh, this is all open source. So okay. One of the things we really, really emphasize early on is that if you're coming to us with a project, if you want to initiate something with us, we would like to make this data available to everyone to share. Mm -hmm. So anyone can go on our website, use the information to build it in their own backyard. Yeah. So that's the idea behind it. Uh, no patent, no copyright issues, mm -hmm. um, just open source. Got it. Fantastic. Um, and again, scienceforhumanity.net? Uh, www.scienceforhumanity.net Great. And tell me again who you are. Uh, Anu Devi.